The University of Edinburgh is not just a great place to work and study, it's a community, and it's also part of the wider community of Edinburgh itself. Our students are at our community's heart and do so much to make it special. You worked hard to get here. So be proud to be part of the community. We're proud of the university. Join us to make it even better. You'll meet people from all over the world. Get to know as wide a range as possible. To develop your understanding of different cultures. You'll learn so much. There's only one University of Edinburgh. There's nowhere else quite like us. There are so many elements to our community, from a vet school to an art college and all points in between. But the outside world sees just one university. We should make that image the best it can be. Let's treat everyone we meet, fellow students and staff, and the people of our city, as we would wish to be treated ourselves. Universities are about free speech and the opportunity to debate. But those debates don't have to develop into arguments. Debating and challenging ideas is part of university life. But do it with respect for other people. We're all different. We've all got different views. Embrace that. It's what makes university so exciting. And while you're busy respecting others, take time out for you. Respect yourself. You'll learn so much at university, not just in terms of what you study, but about yourself and about other people. Of course we want you to have fun too, but please always think about the impact of your actions on others. We're adults and we take responsibility for our own behaviour. Think about how you behave and the impact it has on others. Don't be afraid to challenge behaviour among fellow students if you think it's inappropriate. Be a good neighbour. Be responsible for yourself. And don't be afraid to seek help from our community in those moments of self-doubt. We are One Edinburgh. Understand your rights and responsibilities. It'll make your time here so much better. We're all one. We're all proud to be here. Together, let's continue to make it something to be proud of. <laughs>
It would be such a shame to be in Edinburgh within 150 miles of Glencoe, within 200 miles of, of the far northwest of Scotland, in easy reach of the Outer Hebrides, and not go to see them. And one of the fallacies about master study is that it's very hard and you must focus on it all the time and do nothing else. Please don't. Uh, you'll just, if you do that, you're going to be exhausted by November. You'll be really depressed by Christmas. And, then there's, and there's still 10 months to go, so pace yourselves. And, and reflection is key. What will happen when you start work next week is that people will load work onto you until you can't stand it anymore. But what you need to do is reflect on what you're learning. It's not about the facts anymore. It's about judgment and interpretation and a validation of different kinds of evidence. And to do that, you probably need a lot of walks and a lot of time having coffee with friends. Um, Edinburgh is a very nice city. I just wanted to say that because you're here now. <laughs> I could tell you it was awful, but it would just make you feel depressed. Um, <laughs> So again, it's a great place to get out and walk around, uh, and you can get anywhere on foot. It's a very safe city, uh, and so it's somewhere that you can really enjoy spending time. The university was founded in 1583. As I said, because every year is new, that long inheritance really doesn't count for a lot. What counts is this year, this now. A few years ago, our computer department burned down some of us think that academics burned it down because they wanted a better building, <laughs> it, which is possible. But anyway, it, it burned down. And so for a while, there was no computing school. There was no school of informatics. Except, of course, there was, uh, because it was the academics who made it, not the place. Uh, it doesn't matter what the buildings look like. It's nice that they're some of them very old, some of them very modern, but it's not that that gives us that sense of drive. We were founded as the first civic university, so in many ways, in UK parlance, we're the oldest red brick university in the world, but there are no bricks made in Scotland. I knew you wanted to know that. Uh, the, the geology is just wrong to make bricks, so it's all built of sandstone, but it is a red brick. The important thing here is it's not denominational. It wasn't founded as a religious community. It was founded to provide professionals to the town. And what we'd say now is that we're trying to generate a culture of professionalism in the world of work. We're generally in the top 50 universities in the world. We have some league tables that we really like because they put us higher, and some league tables that we don't shout about because they put us a bit lower. But you've come to a very solid university, and it will do you very well in your next stage after Masters. Uh, and we pride ourselves in being international. And so many of you have come a long way to study here, and the community that we build is essentially a global community. So it's very good to be parochial about how great Edinburgh is, but the university is worldwide in its reach. We've generated a whole series of massive open online courses. Have any of you taken them? Excellent. Well, that's fewer than one might have hoped. Uh, just over a million and a half people worldwide have taken our MOOCs so far. Um, and one thing that the university is very much bound up with is the transmission of knowledge um, we've got to find ways to break the boundaries of the university because there's a world out there that's very hungry for information. And many of you will have the opportunity during your master's study to contribute to that process, and I'd very much urge you to do it. I think it's one of the key responsibilities of an academic locus that we break the geographical boundaries and share what we know. Um, I have a blueprint for your success. It will make you feel so much better to watch me standing here at 50, never having done a master's, and tell you what I think you ought to do. <laughs> but it's no problem, I'm delighted to do it. Um, you will necessarily work hard. You must have worked hard for the last five, six, seven years to get here. But don't make that the be-all and end-all. You need to exercise judgment, because you cannot complete the curriculum for a master's, because it's infinite. So you must choose what you learn. What will help you choose that is the discrimination of peers and networking amongst friends, amongst new friends, with academics, with people doing PhDs, with the servitors and the people who support us in the university. It's absolutely key. It's those networks that are much more likely to supply you with support, careers in the future, opportunities for travel, just release uh, than anything that we can offer in the way of a formal network. So make networks. It's very, very important that you play as hard as you study. 
because you just can't do this as one headlong dive towards the dissertation. So the university has about 200 clubs and societies, and they're really keen for master students to join. And what they tend to find is that you don't because you're worried about the workload. But just join the societies anyway. There's always time for what you really value. And at a university, if you go scuba diving or parachuting or dancing, then that's probably the necessary corollary to all the time that you spend in a library. When things get tough, and they ought to get tough or else we're not stretching you and you're not growing, get help, talk to someone. And I don't mean in a necessarily a very formal way, but don't bottle things up. If you're worried or if you're not sure what the level of study is supposed to be or what a mark might mean or how you might do better, then ask. Uh, what we do with every academic is we ask them to provide study time. So at least for two or three hours a week. They're available, you just knock on the door and you ask them any question you want. Most of that time, they sit in their office and they check their emails because no one asks. Uh, why should I pay for them to do that? <laughs> you, you would be doing me an enormous service if you took up some of their time by asking for help, and they would be delighted to offer that. So get help. Get involved. The university is about communities of active people. So if something doesn't look right, make it right. And what you'll probably find is that the university is very open and receptive to that kind of change. And the corollary of that is be demanding. It may be that sometimes we don't provide you immediately with what you need. That's the same with anybody going into a new job. Make sure you ask for it. If you don't ask, then time will pass and you'll get used to doing without and we'll think everything's fine because nothing is apparently going wrong. So ask for help and be demanding and have fun. It's just a unique year of, and for some of you, for MFAs and so on, two years of dramatically different things. Nothing else in your life will be like this. So really make the most of it. And we have a series of professional bodies who are going to speak after me who can help you with the more formal elements of transitioning into study at this level and transitioning out. So the Career Service, the Students Association, the International Office, if you've travelled a long way to be here, the English Language Teaching Centre, which can take your English from the enormous competence you bring now to a colloquial familiarity with Scots and with working in Scotland, the Disability Service and the Institute for Academic Development. All of them are here for you. And so they're the formal conduits for help and advice that you need while you're here. I wanted to finish with two pictures. This is a master student in geosciences who gave one of our TED talks last year. You've come across TED. Um, that's an event that we run once a year in Innovative Learning Week, but we run hundreds of other events through the year where you can explore your own limits Test what you can do. Do things you never thought you could. Do things you subsequently regret or that make you spend the night before wait, being really nervous, but really exploring beyond just a library and a discipline. Um, and be involved in peer mentoring. Um, this, I think, is the favourite picture I've got from the university. This is people bobbing for apples uh, at Thanksgiving. So um, the... These students are coming from all over the world to a Scottish tradition. They're playing with American ideas about companionship and feasting in October. And most of all, of course, they're having fun. It looks like there's no learning going on, but actually probably in these networks is the rich learning that you need to successfully complete a master's. So have fun. Feel very buoyed up by being here. You've done brilliantly well. And what we'll do now is just spend a few minutes showing you what those more formal services are that can help you if you need it during your studies. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you, Sue. And we are now going to invite, oh, hopefully, Donna from the Institute of Academic Development is going to talk and will hopefully have a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, yes. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, well, yes, uh, I'd just like to say welcome as well. Um, I'll point out it's not apple bobbing, it's duking for apples, if you're a Scottish person. Um, my mother wouldn't let me do it. She said it was unhygienic, but I'm sure you love it. Um, so, yes, I'm head of master's in the Institute for Academic Development, which means I have a great job because I get to help you achieve your potential. 
My job is to take people who are already brilliant and help them become even more brilliant. So I have a lovely job. I love working with you. I really enjoy meeting you each year. We are, uh, I'm with my um, colleague, Ali, at the back. We're going to be through the back in the St Andrew's room after this. We've got lots of leaflets and information. Um, if you don't manage to come to us, please try and look at our website because everything I'm going to talk about is on our website and you can find it all there. Um, all the support, all the advice that I can give to you is there. But please do come and talk to us because we'd, we'd really love to let you know exactly what we can do for you this year. So what is it like to study at postgraduate level? Uh, you know, these are things that the students have said to us over the years. It's an opportunity to, to go really deep within your subject and your discipline. It's an opportunity to explore, to think the big thoughts, to have amazing ideas. It's just a really great opportunity, whether you're here for a year or three years or whatever you're doing with us, it's a great chance to really explore something in detail, talk to academics who are experts in their fields, and really just you know, follow your interests. And as Sue said, work hard, play hard. It's a really great opportunity for you. And how can we support you? We've got our website, which has uh, a lot of resources and information. We've also got uh, workshops. So we run about 120 workshops each year on different topics, such as getting started, exams, dissertations, all the different things that we think are going to support you throughout your time with us. We've also got study consultations. So if you are finding studying at a postgraduate level more challenging than you expected, you can have a one-to-one -one session with a study development expert who will talk you through some of the things that you're finding challenging and come up with some strategies. And our workshops and our study consultations, you can either do on campus, so you can come to our sessions on campus, or if you prefer, you can do them online, because obviously some students are working, some have caring responsibilities, all of these things are available online as well. So we try to make it as easy as possible for you to come and get support from us. Uh, on the website, there's also lots of downloadable resources such as time planners, exam tips, revision tips, uh, a dissertation planner. So whether you're doing a dissertation or a work-based project, uh, this planner will help you work through it and um, plan out exactly when you're doing it and what, what you've got to do at the different stages. Ali and I have some copies of this. Uh, you can also get it from your school so, or from us directly if, if you want it. And I just wanted to give you some advice based on um, what the students have said to us in, in case I don't get to talk to you through the back. Uh, the first one is to get feedback. Now, feedback may be written, it may be a comment, it may be a discussion, it may be from a lecturer or from your other students, but it's the best way to learn and develop and change. So ask for feedback. If you don't understand the feedback that you're given, ask to discuss it again and go over it. And then make sure that you use it in your studying. Make sure that you change what you do based on the feedback which is trying to help you progress. Also, prepare well. You know, as Sue said, the master's year, there is an expectation that you will just work, 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 and you'll have no time to do anything else. But you will have time to think about things, to plan. Now is a good time to think about what you're going to do because you're not starting till next week. So prepare well, look at the resources that you're going to get today, think about where you're going and why you're doing this qualification. Where is it you want to go at the end of it? Also use the university. It's a very old university. We have a lot of different support services um, that are available to support you. So use the services within the university. And lastly, understand yourself. You cannot study all the time. You need to have time with your family, with your friends, for your hobbies. Know what, how you are going to study best and make sure that you prioritize that but also prioritise time for doing other things so that you, you're a more rounded person. It, it really will not work if you just study. And finally, um, I'd like you to keep in touch with us. We've got a Twitter feed, a blog. We've also got an email account, ied.masters at ed.ac.uk. 
Ali um, and I check that every day. We're really happy for you to email us if there's something you need more information on. If there's something you're not sure about, if there's a workshop that you don't understand, just email us rather than try and work it out on your own. We'd rather hear from you than you try and just get by without that help. There's our website and there's also information on uh, Digital Footprint, which is how to have a really positive digital presence. I really would like you to consider how you come across online as well. Um, so that's how you keep in touch with us. That's everything we can do for you. And I will be in the back waiting to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. And now Carol from the Career Service will briefly speak to you. Hi everyone, my name's Carol MacDonald and I'm one of the careers consultants from the University Career Service. So I'm really pleased to be able to come along and just say a few words about what the Career Service does, what we're all about, the support that's available and how you can find more information. And um, as with the other services, the Career Service has got a stand through in the St Andrews Hall and we'll be there all afternoon so please do come and talk to us um, later. Now, what's up here is actually our vision statement. So this is, this is what we're all about. This is what we aim to do. So quite a broad goal. But basically, we're here to support you to gain experiences which will help you explore the opportunities that are out there. And there are so many different career opportunities that are available to you. And we want to make sure that you feel that you're equipped with the skills and experience to help you successfully navigate your career in the future. Now, I know as you just embark on your master's degree, you've got a lot of things to take um, account of. And for some of you, careers won't be the first thing on your priority list. However, I would really encourage you to start to address your career planning fairly early on. And I'll just explain why in a minute. Certainly to engage in opportunities through the coming year to make the most of your time at Edinburgh and really to, to find out and position yourself well to make the, the most of things in the future. Now, I'd said about the time element. Can I just get you to, to look at this think about box here? And the first thing there is deadlines for applications for jobs or for study. If you are only here for one year, something that's important that you are aware of is that a lot of large international companies who are recruiting graduates require you to make an application for jobs starting next summer before Christmas this year. That may sound ridiculous if you don't know about this. It's how the system works, not for all companies, not for all jobs. But it's important that you realise there are some early deadlines and that you check out what these are and that you think about what you want to do just so that you don't miss opportunities. But to reassure you, opportunities are advertised all the way around the, the year as well. But just do be aware of early deadlines. And it's not just for jobs. There are also de early deadlines for those of you who are thinking about potentially continuing with your studies. If you're looking at postgraduate study, and particularly if you're trying to tap into some of the funding opportunities. So do just check that out. And with that in mind, although again it may seem very early, it's good at the start of your master's programme to start to think about how you can market yourself for these opportunities. So to think about how you can develop a well-targeted CV to really market yourself for what you're looking for. And to start to think about interviews, maybe not too serious at the start, but to just to start to think about how you can project your skills well, show your experience well and your motivation well through all stages of a selection process. But to move on, to look at the support we give you, you will find that this year you'll be invited to a series of career conversations, so opportunities to meet with other students to explore different types of occupations, to think about what's involved in making career decisions, to think about how to source vacancies, to think about how to market yourself effectively. You are welcome to book an individual careers uh, consultation at any point with one of the careers consultants. Um, if you do that, you can book appointments online. The agenda is yours. We have no preconceptions about what you want to cover um, or what your priorities will be. It will be picking up where you are and trying to deal with whatever issue you have. We do advertise jobs. We advertise thousands of jobs each year, including part-time casual jobs to get some cash or just get more experience around Edinburgh. 
internships where you can undertake a project to gain more career orientated perhaps subject orientated experience that will help you progress your job and career in the future and also graduate opportunities for when you finish and you've already heard me say there are some early deadlines for that at Edinburgh, we're very fortunate in the fact that we're targeted by a lot of employers, large employers and smaller employers, and there are a lot of opportunities through the year for you to engage with these employers, network with these employers, and find out about what they're offering, and also find out what they're looking for when they recruit students. So you'll find there are careers fairs, careers festivals, sector-specific events, um, employer recruitment events coming up. I should flag up the first Careers Fair, our main Careers Fair is early in October and about 120 companies are coming along to that. So we hope that's something you'll find very useful and can put in your diaries now. We do have a specific postgraduate welcome day on the 17th of September. And if you haven't um, already got that in your diary, you may wish to put it down. As you can see, there are sessions in finding part-time jobs while studying information in the career service, and also some information in the UK graduate market if you're not from the UK or if you feel you don't understand how that operates well. So just to round up, where to get further information? We do have a fairly extensive website. Um, on that website, as well as all sorts of general information that's relevant to all students at the university, there is a postgrad specific section. So you'll be able to find a lot of information that's really geared up to you as a postgrad student. We have a, a separate system linked to our website called My Career Hub, which you can um, access through my Ed, but do access it through the website. And on that system, you will find out details of all the events coming up, the fairs, the presentations, the careers conversations, everything that's happening. You'll also find details of all the vacancies, all different types of vacancies on that system. And you can book one-to-one -one individual consultations with advisors through My Career Hub. But it's all explained through the website. Just to let you know where we're based, we've got two offices, one on the third floor of the main library building and one in King's building, the, the Weir building at King's building. If you've got any queries, please do get in touch with us. We'll be happy, very pleased to see you at any point through the year. But if you have any further questions today, please do contact me or my colleagues um, in St Andrew's um, corridor, just corridor, whatever, just at the back. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now Christine will speak from the library. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to meet you all today. It's not often that I have the chance to speak to quite so many students as this. So I'm, my name is Christine Love Rogers. I'm one of the academic um, support librarians at the University of, at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and I'm here today to welcome you to the University of Edinburgh Library, which is a fantastic library. I like the slide which has the, the uh, uh, cityscape of, 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 of Edinburgh. And it's true to say that we have libraries which are, 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 are uh, uh, throughout, this, this, uh, throughout this landscape, which, which, are, which, are, which are, are open to you. Many of you will have already encountered the main university library. Who's been to the main university library here? Did you collect your card? Yeah, I thought so. Um, so that will be the main, the main library site for many of you where, you, where you'll find the, the, the library collections which are most relevant to you. But there are also others. There's New College Library, which is just on the doorstep here, if you go down the steps. And I do encourage you, if you've not been in there, um, take the chance while, 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 while you are here um, on this site, just, just to pop, pop your head around the door and, and have a look at New College Library. It's a beautiful library. There's also the Education Library at Murray House, down, the, down near, uh, close to Holyrood. There's the Law Library, there's the Murray Library for Science um, out at King's Buildings. And those, those are just a few. All of those library sites are open to you. If you need to want to know any more about, about uh, any particular one of those, I'll be, uh, I'll be in the St Andrew's room later. Okay, a few things to tell you about. Discover Ed. Some of you um, have previously been students at Edinburgh University. 
Um, but as far as Discover goes, everyone's starting um, on a clean slate because it's a new system which has come in this summer. It's the library's discovery system. It's the library catalogue. So it's the place where you can go to find out about the books and journals and theses um, that which we hold within the library. But it's also a place where you can discover all the online content we have, the e-journals, the e-books. And also um, you, you, can, you can search um, for, for journal articles at, at, a, at a keyword level. So it's a great place to start search. It's not the only place to search, um, and, and uh, many of you will have sessions with your uh, academic support librarians where we'll be telling you about all the library resources we have, all the bibliographic databases wait, which you can use to, to um, systematically search the literature in your own um, uh, subject, specialist subject areas. Okay, so... You've got the URL there for Discover. That's your starting point, and you'll find that um, if you log into MyEd, your own the university's um, 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 system, um, or it's on the library web pages as well. Academic support librarians, I'm one of them. Um, you all have your own personal academic uh, support librarian. There's one for every school and subject area. We are a library-wide team, but we're very pleased to be embedded within schools and subject areas. Um, and that means that one of the key things we do at this time of year is that we host, um, we, we, we run information skills um, library introduction sessions. Um, and I'll be doing that this week for the School, of, for the school of, of Divinity, who I support. Anybody here from Divinity? Yeah, a few faces. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Um, if, and, and for the School of Social and Political Science. Anyone here from Social and Political Science? Really, I'm running workshops for you on Thursday and Friday. Uh, but for those of you in different subject areas, um, my colleagues throughout the team will be running sessions um, in the coming weeks. And so we'll look forward to meeting you there. Um, you're also able to, if you wish, you can get, get in touch with us. Um, we can meet up with you one-to-one. -one. Students often do that when they're starting to explore their... their, their, um, di uh, their uh, dissertation research and, and you're scoping out the landscape of this of, of the particular topic you've chosen sometimes you find that you can't find quite so much um, literature uh, 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 as you might expect and you're starting to think have I chosen the right topic there's lots of questions there and we can help you um, make sure that you've got the skills to to find the material you want and to explore the landscape um, in, in, in your topic area okay so again the URLs there, feel free to get in touch or ask me when um, I'm in the St Andrews room. Study space, um, we know from the feedback that you give us from surveys and also face to face how important study space in the library is to you. Um, and you'll find um, a lot of study space um, around the university campus. And the main library is a favourite spot for many. It does get very busy, so we encourage you to be aware of all the potential range of study space which, the, which is open to you in, in the university. And there's different kinds of spaces. We've outlined out there you might want to be looking for silent study space. Um, and we have a dedicated silent postgraduate study area on the fifth floor of the main library. Um, but there are also, within the library areas, there are group there are spaces, there are spaces which are, are quiet but not silent, um, and there are noisier spaces like, like the library cafe. So there's a variety of spaces depending on what, you, what you're looking for. Library Resources Plus. Um, as master's students, we expect you to be starting to push the boundaries, and, you, and we expect you, you'll probably be looking for library materials which you might not find within the library. You're exploring new areas. Um, and so um, you might want to fight, you might, might want to get hold of materials which are not uh, currently held at the University of Edinburgh. You can use the interlibrary loan service. As postgraduates or students, you're entitled, to, you're entitled to 30 free interlibrary loans a year. Um, you can also request a book. That's where, if we don't have the book that you want in the library, you fill in an online form and we, we, will, aim to, we will aim to purchase that book for you. Request a book service is great for when you're planning, your, pl planning ahead for, for, for your uh, dissertation research and you want to make sure the book's in the library for, for further down the, down the line. Not necessarily the best way to get hold of a book that you want for your seminar next week, but it's a long-term planning thing. So please do. We've we, 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 um, we spent thousands and thousands um, on, on student recommendations over the last couple of years. We have a dedicated fund for that purpose. Right, don't be afraid to ask for help. There's lots of help available. The academic support librarians like myself were great people to ask if you're wanting help with your, with, with your literature search or if there are resources that the library doesn't have, like journals, and you think you should have, come and ask us about that. 
the IS helpline, so that's, that's, that's a really, really great um, source of help because that's open, if not 24-7, if not 24 7, it's open a lot of the time, whereas I'm only there 9 to 5, so I'm, I'm limited in that respect. But if, you, if you're stuck in the middle of the night, if, if you've forgotten your password, if you can't get into the e-journal, which you want, and, and, and you think you ought to be able to, call the, uh, contact the IS helpline and you'll get a, um, a quicker answer. And there's lots of online help on the library web pages too. Okay, and that's it for me. Hope to see you later. <laughs>
We are quite precise about it, but it's usually not a massive amount of information. If you've got a health condition or a disability, a simple letter from a relevant medical professional, so from your doctor, consultant, psychiatrist, CPN, whatever, as long as it's someone who knows you well, knows your condition, and it's been written within the last six to nine months, that should be fine. Particularly if it says something about how your disability impacts on your studies, because that's what we're all about, and that's the really important bit of what we need to know. If it's a learning difficulty, um, a report from a psychologist, either an educational or a clinical psychologist, is really what we need for conditions like dyslexia, ADHD, attention deficit disorder, or conditions on the autism spectrum. Now, if you don't have that, or if the report that you have is from some time ago, we can screen for and refer to an educational or clinical psychologist for diagnosis of dyslexia or autistic spectrum disorders or attention deficit hyperactivity, bleh, hyperactivity disorder. Um, so if you haven't, haven't been tested for some time or have never been tested and you've had something at the back of your mind thinking, actually, I really struggle with this, this aspect of my studies and maybe there is something more to it, um, please do get in touch with us. We can screen for and hopefully establish whether or not you have a difficulty, where those difficulties lie. Equally important, where your strengths lie, and then we can put support in place that's going to reflect that. A couple of years ago, the university took a decision to mainstream a number of adjustments. That's a bit of jargon. It just means slight adaptations to how students experience their learning and teaching as a result of a particular disability or health condition. But the university recognised that a lot of the adjustments that we were recommending were actually of benefit to all students, regardless of whether they had a disability or a health condition or that were registered with our service or had one of our profiles where we communicate the support the students need. So it mainstreamed these adjustments. And what that means is all students, so all of you, whether you have a disability or a health condition or not, whether you contact us or not, you should, make, you should be getting these provisions automatically. Now, it's not a huge list of provisions, but it's a start, and it really does show the university's commitment to mainstreaming support of dis disabled students and to ensure that all students are able to access their, their teaching and learning as effectively as possible. If you want more information about what we do and how we do what we do and what we need you to do in order to enable us to do what we do, check out our website. Loads of information on there. Or get in touch with us, drop us an email, give us a ring, pop in and see us. We're very e conveniently located in the main library and I'm here all afternoon along with everyone else who's been saying it just next door in the St Andrews Hall. Thanks very much. And now Keith from security section is just going to briefly talk to you about security. You need to press it on one for you already. No, just did that one. Yeah, that's good. Hi everybody. Uh, nice to see all the faces. Um, we've heard a lot about support this afternoon, and yeah, we are part of the you, the support to you as the security section. Just to give you a little bit of an overview as to uh, the size of the security section within Edinburgh University and uh, how it comprises. Um, we have uh, 61 security officers in the university, employed by the university, um, 50 of which work 24-7 shifts, seven days a week, every day of the year. The other 10 of us doing a day shift, which includes myself. Um, I'm, I'm event team manager, as I was introduced, I'm, my name's Keith Wilson. Um, I have a small team and I attend events like this, graduations, uh, career fairs, everything else, uh, event related, VIP visits, that type of thing. And uh, we kind of specialise in that area. Um, within us as well, we also have two crime prevention officers that liaise very, very closely with Police Scotland. So if any of you are unfortunate enough, and I'm sure in a room with as many people in it as this, some of you may be, uh, to lose something or have something stolen, um, we have the processes to very quickly uh, you know, work with Police Scotland on these matters and it's been very successful over the last year or two. So as I say, we've got 61 security officers. We're based in um, 13, 13 Infirmary Street, which is just uh, quite close to the old college, for those of you who've been in the old college. Um, we're, we're opposite, more or less opposite Chambers Street. 
And the, if there's one phone number you put in your phone when you're here, I would advise it's our phone number because not just for security reasons, but we can assist people to get into locked rooms if you've got anything locked out of a room. If you leave a coat or a laptop or anything in a room, we can get you in, especially out of hours. Um, there are servitors attached to the buildings that can assist you through the day, but out of hours, it's generally ourselves. So it's a good phone number that to have in your person. Um, you might not be aware, but it is on the back of your matric cards, and I saw you, a lot of you have got them now. Um, so the security number's on the, it's the first phone number on the back of your matric card. Uh, but, you know, don't just have it on the card. I would advise that you put in your phone. Um, and it's not just for instances or, or anything that happens on campus, it's off it as well. Um, we had, I, had a, I spoke to a student earlier on today who had had a, a situation uh, where she had been followed by somebody uh, who had a broken bottle in his hand and he, he, he scored the bottle down the wall as he was walking behind her. Now that's quite intimidating. And she didn't know what to do, she didn't know who to phone, she didn't know whether it was something that was worth phoning the police about. That's something you could phone us about. It's, uh, we have a mobile unit um, and, and although it's not on campus, you are a student and it, the same applies to staff. Um, yeah, we have a responsibility for you as well, whether you're on campus or not. So if it's something that happens in Edinburgh City Centre, by all means still phone us. And we can then make contact with the people that need to be contacted. I have a number of cards. Um, we, have a, we have a table in the rainy room, I believe it is, which is just out towards the front doors, uh, a bit to the, the left. We've got a table there. We have these cards. You're, you can take them away with you by all means. Um, gives you all the information for contact to us. You can email us through security um, at ed.ac.uk um, or you can just plainly phone us. There is an emergency number for the university. It's 2222. Um, you, you can call us in an emergency situation on that number uh, from any phone within the university. Um, however, if it's a medical situation, for instance, and you've got somebody collapse in front of you, my advice would be that you phone Treble 9 and then you phone us. Uh, because if we phone the ambulance for you, they're going to ask us a lot of awkward questions that we can't answer. So it's better that the people that are there uh, answer, are, are on the phone to answer the questions. Yeah, within the university, it's, uh, Edinburgh is a relatively safe city. But I mean, I've lived here all my life and. Um, my background was the police, so I'm well aware of the type of people that come through the city centre. We do get opportunist criminals, and they do come into the university. A lot of our buildings are open for people to freely access. We have cafes in buildings that public can come into, and once they're in the cafes, they're in the building. But even places like the main library, um, we, we, we do get instances of laptops getting stolen, unfortunately. Now, even in, we've vastly reduced uh, that by giving staff a much better awareness of what's happened. Uh, for instance, we have an alert system. If there's somebody seen in a building that's, that shouldn't be in that building, we have an alert system that we put out to other building uh, key staff so that they're aware of that person being in the vicinity. Um, so we have, uh, we've made great steps in reducing what happens in university. Um, however, as I said, if, it, if there's one laptop stolen in one month, if it's your laptop, you know, it's hugely important to you. So, any laptop stolen is one too many. Um, so take measures. We, we mark property. We, uh, if you come to us, we'll mark your property with security mark. Uh, we're out marking bikes. Uh, it's that cycles in. If you get bikes, we, we will security mark them. It's something that you'd have to pay about £45, £46 to get done through the police. It's offered to students and staff as a free um, uh, service. So from next Thursday, we are outside the visitor centre which is in Charles Street, Bristol Square. And we'll be marking bikes between 12 and 2. Anybody that's got a bike well, more than welcome to bring it along. You'll also get your bike serviced by Dr. Bike. Uh, they'll replace brake pads, cables, uh, all free, to, free service to yourselves. Um, obviously, the university pay for that, but it's absolutely free to yourselves. So we'll be out there from Thursday outside the visitor centre, and you can check on the website, and you'll get all the dates through the transport and parking website. They're cards that I have and you can get from our table um, if you want to write down the identifiable marks on your laptop or your mobile phone and keep it in your room just in case you ever lose it. Uh, the, small hash the small hash number under the IMEI number gives you the, if you dial that into your phone, star hash, 06 hash, you automatically on your screen will come up the IMEI number. 
and that is unique to your phone, and it's worth keeping, just in the event that you do lose it. Because I can assure you that the local police station has got a pile of iPhones that haven't got back to their owners because they can't identify who they are. Um, if, you can, if, you've, if you've got some sort of identifying mark, um, much better chance you're getting it back. For non-emergency numbers to the police, it's 101 for anything. Emergency numbers, 999. And as I said, emergency for the universities, 2222. And our phone numbers, 502257. But if you do want, you'll get them on the web page. You'll get them from me after this at our table. Um, or if you want to put them on your phone, that's absolutely fine. So thank you very much for your time. It's just by way of giving you a wee snapshot about the security service. We're, we are probably one of the very few people that's contactable 24-7. And it's not just for security, it's just for absolutely anything. If you want to phone us for advice on who to contact to get the advice you want, you can phone our office. You'll get an answer 24-7. Okay, so thanks very much. Have a nice time. Hope it's safe. And, uh And now Tanya will speak to you about you, sir. Well, hello and a very warm welcome to each and every one of you from all of us at Edinburgh University Students Association, which is fondly known as USA. So you are each members automatically of USA, and we offer support and advice and um, help you in all, all areas of your life here at university. Uh, we are here to represent you, but we can only be as representative as uh, you let us be by talking to us, by becoming reps, and by letting us know which, which issues are important to you so that we can campaign on those issues and that we can engage you in events and activities and support that's relevant to you and your lives. So we have a lot going on this year, and we're really looking forward to having you be part of it. So I'll go through a lot of our different uh, things that we have here at the university. We have four student union buildings, TV at Potter Row, Pleasance, and K KB House. So we hope to see you at all of those buildings. We have lots of different uh, shops, bars, uh, restaurants, all sorts of different places for you, um, and as well as flexible study space. We have about 250 different societies, so that there's something for each and every one of you here. Uh, we have things like the Postgraduate Society, which organizes social events for all of you, um, going to bars or restaurants together, or also taking trips around Scotland. There's also things like the Water of Life, the Whiskey Society, or Dance Societies. So there are loads of different things, and they're not just for undergrads, they're very much for postgrads as well. We also have volunteering um, opportunities here at the university. So we have uh, volunteering groups that go out mainly on Wednesday afternoons, but we can also set you up with one-on-one -on -one volunteering opportunities that are relevant to your research too. We also have the advice place. So they answer over 19,000 inquiries every year. We have trained and professional academic and welfare advisors at the advice place. And all of their advice is confidential and free and impartial. We have a peer proofreading service that a lot of you may be interested in. So that is free proofreading by other students who are trained in how to do the proofreading for you. That is completely free. So if you're a non-native English speaker, you can take part in that. And we also have lots of different peer support opportunities across all of your different uh, departments and schools. And if there isn't one in your school just yet, then just ask, and we're very happy to set them up since that's a growing area of our support. We also run USA Global with the, the Gather Festival, Tandem Language Exchange Program, and lots of other events and activities throughout the year to celebrate community and different cultures. And also, um, we're going to move on to a quick video here where your sabbatical officers will uh, introduce themselves to you. Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm your USA president. I'm one of the four sabbatical officers elected by you to work full time for a year to represent students to the university and beyond and to run our Students' Union. Edinburgh University Students' Association is 33,000 members strong. Every student at the University of Edinburgh, that means every one of you, is a member. USA has 130 full-time staff dedicated to organising Freshers' Week, promoting peer support, providing you with the advice and academic guidance when you need it, offering great food and drink and fantastic festivals and events. I'm Andy, USA's Vice President of Societies and Activities. 
As well as student societies and volunteering, I also look after welfare, liberation and equality, ensuring our university environment is always welcoming and diverse. I'm Imogen, UCS Vice President Academic Affairs. I'm here to support you with all aspects of academic life, academic support, assessments, study spaces and more. I look after school councils, class reps and the teaching awards. I'm Erta, UCS Vice President Services. My role includes sustainability, estates, and finance. I oversee all the services UCS provides to students, including events, shops, and bars, all of which are low-cost, student-run, and ethical. All of our profits go straight back into running our four buildings. UCS is here to help make your time at Edinburgh the best it can possibly be. Get involved or find out more by visiting our website or finding us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. Great, so those are your four sabbatical officers. They were elected in March this year, and they're <laughs> running it again here. Uh, so they are out in full force around the university and the campus this week and also throughout the year. And they really want to hear from you and hear about the issues that matter to you um, and get to meet you and, and learn more about you. We had 150 different students at our Masters Speed Networking event last night, which we held in uh, Tiviet, and some of you were probably there and saw Imogen, our Vice President Academic Affairs there. Uh, so the sabbatical officers very much rely on a, a, a huge team of 1,700 reps across the university. We have class reps in all of our degree programs and courses across the, all of the different schools. And so we want to encourage you to stand to become a postgrad rep in your programs or courses. So in the next two weeks, your academic um, support staff or your uh, course organizers will ask who wants to become a, a postgrad rep. So that really means you'll be liaising with other students to gather opinions, then you'll be uh, identifying issues and working to, uh, to work towards solutions along with staff members. So we hope you'll volunteer for those types of roles and become one of our postgrad reps this year. We also hope some of you will also stand in our by-election, so we're looking for postgrad vice conveners to run in each of the 22 schools. And even though you just arrived here at the university, it's never too early to get involved, and we really want to hear from you. Uh, some of you will have done similar roles like this at other universities, and even if you haven't, we have a huge team of staff here to support you along your way, and it, everyone can get involved. No superpowers needed is our slogan this year. So we have a, a postgrad convener also who runs the postgrad group. Um, that person will be elected also in our October by-elections, and they'll rep represent all of you and all postgraduates across the university in strategic decision-making and committees and also running events like dissertation events that we ran last year along with the IAD. So in, in summary, we're here to support all of your student experience. We hope that you make the most of your experience here, like Sue and Donna said earlier. Um, and just to get you started, I'll also be in the back room with lots of postgrad guides if you haven't picked up one already. Uh, but get involved, go to lots of events, and just enjoy your first week here. So thank you. And now Ola from the counselling service will now give you a brief overview of school counselling. This will be the last service, and then we will um, hear from two current students. Hi, my name's Yola from the Student Counselling Service, and I'll keep this brief as you've had a, a lot of information given to you. Um, we're a team of about 30 professional counsellors. Uh, what we offer is short-term counselling, up to six sessions. It's available Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and also in the evenings from Monday to Thursday until 9 o'clock. We're accessible... Uh, the main library is our main office, co-located with Careers and Student Disability Service, but we also have counsellors five days a week at King's Buildings, twice a week at Edinburgh College of Art, five days at Murray House, and uh, two afternoons at Easter Bush, the vet school. So between all those locations, you should be able to access us. These are just a few of the issues that people come to us with, but you can come with any issue that you feel is causing you difficulty and preventing you living your life as enjoyably and fully as you feel you would like. 
some people come with issues that are around uh, stress and anxiety to do with the academic side of their life, but the social side can uh, cause as, as many different issues. Uh, I think as the year goes on, we get busier and busier. So if you feel there is an issue that is bothering you, it's advisable to come, I suppose, earlier rather than, than let it uh, become a bigger problem. We are hoping to help you have the most positive experience in all aspects of your life while you're here. Um, we also provide email counselling. Some of you might go on research trips, uh, gathering information for dissertations. So you can uh, keep in contact with us by email. Uh, three years ago, the university put money into a support service called the Big White Wall. You can have six months free access to this by registering with your university email account. It's an online mental health support website with a lot of information about um, anxiety, depression, relationship issues. It's got anonymous online forums, but a, a lot of self-help material. Uh, you can also access a lot of self-help material from our website, um, and the university has a lot of books you can borrow, both uh, hard copy and online. If you do want to register with us, you can register directly from our website. There's a form and a questionnaire. Now, the questionnaire is not compulsory, but it's helpful for us just to know what sort of issue that we might be able to support you with. Those are some positive quotes from some former clients. Um, semester time is an evening service, but during the long summer vacation, it's uh, all based in the main library and the other services close down. Um, we're in the back as well, and we have some useful other information, cards for the online service and some books on managing stress. Hopefully the stress will be not the overwhelming experience of this year. I hope you have a very good positive experience, but if there are difficulties, you know that we're there to support you. Okay, all the best. Roland, um, I'd say the last service, but Roland is just briefly going to come up and chat to you about um, scholarships and funding to let you know what you can go and ask him about at the stall. Hello everybody, I'm just going to be very, very quick, just a couple of quick announcements. I'm Roland Tai, I'm the Scholarships and Financial Support Manager here at the University. Firstly, welcome everyone, I uh, hope you're enjoying your, your start here in Edinburgh. Now I appreciate that you've only just started your programme of study, you're all thinking about that, however, some of you may be considering going on to study in 2016-17. And what I wanted to let you know is that the scholarship deadlines, the PhD scholarship deadlines for 2016-17, they close on the 1st of February 2016. So I would advise to anybody who's thinking about continuing their studies to really have a good think about it this side of Christmas, because you know what it's like once you start the new year, suddenly before you know it, it'll be the 1st of February. Um, so that's just, I appreciate it's very early in the year to be thinking about these things, but um, just to make you aware, 1st of February is the deadline. The second thing I wanted to let you know about, this is only for UK students, so apologies, I know there's a lot of non-UK students in the room today. My office uh, administers funds on behalf of the Scottish Government, they're called discretionary funds, and these are for students who find themselves in financial difficulties during their studies here. I'll be able to give you more information about that afterwards, and also about any issues to do with student funding that you may have. Um, those are called discretionary funds, but again, I should reiterate that uh, unfortunately they're only for UK students. If you aren't able to speak to me outside, you can um, come to the student information point in Old College at any time, and my team uh, are available there. And you can also email studentfunding at ed.ac.uk. Thanks very much. Thank you, Raylene. We're now going to have Megan and Charlene are going to uh, talk about making the most of your experience as a postgraduate taught student. But I think you have graduated, I'm just saying current but you can explain that. <laughs> Hi, everyone, can you hear me okay? Lovely. Uh, my name is Megan Brown, and last year I was a postgraduate taught student here at Edinburgh in uh, LLC, and I did the Literature and Society course. And I'm here to give you some general tips today about making the most of your time as a master's student here at Edinburgh. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, great. 
Uh, hi, my name is Charlene. I'm uh, currently a part-time master student just starting my second year in film exhibition and curation at LLC. So the advice I'm going to give you comes mainly for, uh, from a part-time perspective, but hopefully it will be useful to all of you guys. Uh, so I'll get going with just a first tip here, which I would suggest uh, as soon as possible you get to know the staff. Um, the photo here, in case you were wondering, is from last December. And it's a message from the LLC postgrad office uh, telling us to help ourselves to mould wine and mince pies after handing in our coursework uh, just before Christmas. And this is just to let you know they are kind, they are supportive, they are there to help you. And from my experience, the people in your postgrad office tend to know everything about everything. Do go and talk to them. Um, academic staff are also a great uh, point of contact. They have weekly office hours that you can attend. And I cannot emphasize enough, they do want you to attend them. It just shows that you're engaging with their topics, they appreciate it, so please do go along. Uh, another way to get in contact uh, with staff is through becoming a student rep. I was a class rep for my year here at Edinburgh, it's something you can do as a master's student, and that involves getting feedback from your fellow students. And during my time I got to uh, sit on the staff student liaison committee, I was also a rep for the MSD directors meeting, so it's really a great chance to, uh, to get to know them as well as possible. Um, I would also suggest look out for school events. LLC did a lovely event every Friday, uh, which was where they would run seminars where a speaker would come along. There was also free wine, which I think was maybe a large part of people's attendance. But, um, it, you know, see what your school does, and there will be things available that I would, I would recommend joining in. Um, I will go through this quite quickly. I know that I've got short on time. Um, second tip, become part of the international community. We're really lucky here at Edinburgh that we have got students from hundreds of different countries. Uh, this is two pictures, just from my year, it's relatively vain. Um, the one on the left is a picture from Thanksgiving, organised by my American course mates. Uh, they also invited me to an Independence Day barbecue, which does have some irony, but was very enjoyable as well. <laughs> um, the photo on the right is my housemate. Uh, I apologies to all the Dutch-speaking people in, in the room, but that was from Sinterklaas, which is sort of Dutch Christmas. They won't appreciate me phrasing it like that. And um, I lived in a nine-bed house, only two of which are British, so I would really recommend just getting in, involved with all the opportunities that, and if you are from another country, you know, bring your cultures, bring your traditions, and get involved. Um, and a separate note for Scottish students, Please also share your cultural practices, even if you think they are cliche. It was through Scottish course mates I learned what a square sausage was this year. You may find that out as well, who knows. Um, and thirdly, I would suggest just get involved as much as possible. I know you're, many of you are only here for a year, and um, it can feel like there's not enough time to do everything. Uh, there is. Obviously be sensible, balance as much as possible, but this is just some of the things I did uh, on my year here. So you can see, I won't mention everything, but there's a peer proofreading scheme, which I believe Tanya mentioned before. Um, I was also in the female voice choir, so you can get involved in these societies. That's a great opportunity. Uh, I was a volunteer for Edinburgh University Library. That one down at the bottom is the Centre for Research Collections, and through that I got to volunteer at the National Library of Scotland as well, so you don't know where these opportunities can take you. And also, uh, the other corner down there, uh, the James Tate Black Prizes. Again, it's an LLC one. Uh, but that's an amazing opportunity. It's the oldest book prize in Britain, and postgrad LLC students are allocated books to read, which you can keep at the end, which is another bonus. And um, you just write reviews of each one, and you get invited to the International Book Festival. So again, just look out for all these opportunities. Try and do at least one non-academic thing a week, because it will actually keep you in a good routine. Uh, and yeah, just do as much as possible. Thank you. So switching to actually more academic advice, I'm sorry if this is really boring, but I have to do it because I want to be honest with you guys. Uh, keep a diary is a really good advice. Uh, I know that sounds a bit silly or childish, but keeping an up-to-date diary with all your commitments, classes, and other engagements that you may have can really help you organize your timetable, keep your head clear, and focus on more important things than just remembering if your meeting on Monday is with your personal tutor or if it's actually a job interview. A diary will help you plan effectively, therefore av avoiding unnecessary stress and every student's deadliest enemy, procrastination. If you come up with a personal timetable with all your activities on it and you stick to it, you will gain a regular rhythm of study, you will avoid spending time stressing over organizational issues and your life will be much easier. Second tip kind of ties in with keeping a diary, but planning in advance is the next level of organiza organizational skills. 
Um, there are usually two main types of part-time students, but this also applies to full-time students. Uh, there are some part-time students who have a job, they have sometimes a full-time one, uh, and or a family life, which is a situation I can't really talk about because I have a part-time job, but I don't have a family life in Scotland. Uh, and there are students like me who have a part-time job or no job at all, and they just decided to do a part-time degree so that they have more time to do things outside their studies and more time to think about what they want to do after graduation. In both cases, and if you're a full-time student, you will strongly benefit from planning well in advance. For instance, once you know the dates of your essays deadline, uh, don't wait until the last minute to, to actually start working on them. Your workload as a part-time student is less important than some of your fellow full-time students. Uh, so you should take the opportunity to use this extra time to start earlier and deepen your research and your reflection. And if you're a full-time student, obviously you will benefit from planning in advance and not wait until the, the last minute. Especially in the case of your dissertation, which you might be asked to start working on in April if you're a master's student, uh, you should definitely take the chance to start at least thinking about your subject as early as possible so that you can explore all different ideas and options that you have and just come up with the best topic possible. And lastly, explore. Um, I will try not to repeat what Megan already told you about societies and getting involved in university, but I will insist on getting involved outside university. Um, if you're a part-time student, you, can, you have time, for example, to get a part-time job, and you have time to do some volunteering experience, especially with all the festivals that are going on in Edinburgh all year round. And we also have volunteering opportunities, and you can do an internship, or you can just work on personal projects that you really want to focus on. Uh, just in general, developing your range of skills and brushing up your CV is really important for employers and there are plenty of opportunities across Edinburgh, so you should definitely think about it and take them. Coming back to part-time students, it really enables you to balance your academic, personal and professional life much more easily than full-time students, uh, and it will be a good step towards the transition between student life and real life. So take your time, look around, and just see what's out there and enjoy. Uh, this, this tip, as I said, also works for full-time students, and other activities will definitely make the difference between you and another student who just decided to focus on his dissertation. And this brings us to the end of our presentation. We hope these tips will be helpful to you uh, to start your postgraduate journey. Thank you for listening, and we will see you at the networking event, hopefully. <laughs>